Today, I'm going to be recreating the most iconic creature from Ninjago, the Great Devourer. And once I'm done with this build, I'm going to simulate some of the craziest scenes from Ninjago using this Great Devourer. Let's get into it. In the show, this snake is massive. I mean, it can literally eat Destiny's Bounty in one bite. In 2012, they came out with the Great Devourer size build, which is disappointing to say the least. Overall, it's a unique build, but it's way downsized and it has way too much lime green on it. In the show, the majority of this snake is dark green. See, the problem is I don't have dark green. When I say I don't have dark green, I mean I have like 10 dark green pieces. How am I supposed to make a giant dark green Great Devourer. Well, there's only one thing for it, and that is lego.com pick a brick. Now, $250 later, I'm ready to order my 1,153 Lego parts. A month later, a mysterious package showed up in the mail. I ripped it open, and sure enough, dark green pieces flooded out. Let's go. It's time for some Lego haul. 200 1x4 plate bow, 300 2x4 brick bow, 200 2x3 flat pile angle, 200 1x3 brick bows, 3 6x8x2 by by shell bow angle pieces, 100 1x2 bow right plate, and 100 left plate bow, 8 3x12x2 by by thirds flap, that's just what it says on the paper, I'm sorry, a load of 2x2 two two dark green tiles, and I got 80 dark tan inverted bow pieces. Whew! It's time to start working on the actual mock. The hardest part about making a creature is you have to make it organic and look like it's all flowing together. A robot can be mechanical and easy to make, and of course I wanted this snake to have some movement. I started by getting a lot of these heavy duty hinge pieces that they use for dragon tails. Each section I'm making for the main body section contains a total of four of these hinges. I tried to make the structure inside of this as sturdy as I could, using a lot of snot bricks and layering pieces on top of each other. And finally to finish this off was the most satisfying part, where I got to make three of these 8x8 segments using dark green bow pieces. I put them on all sides. For the underbelly, I used eight of those dark tan inverted bow pieces. Every other one of these sections was offset by half a plate to make the gap in between smaller. Two segments done. Now I just need six more. It was time for me to speed build the other six. So I started grinding away for two hours, and by the end of it, we had a nice looking tail. I mean, you can still pick it up. Yes, that's what I wanted. I hope you got that on camera. Once I was done rebuilding what I had just destroyed, I started designing the end of the tail where it gets smaller. Okay, get ready for the most cinematic couple seconds of your life because I got my time lapse strapped to the top of my head. So you're going to see what I see. Each segment I made from now on kept getting smaller and smaller until we got to the very end of the tail where I made a deadly white spike with a lot of smaller spikes along it. Now inside four of the main body sections I was able to add little compartments where I could fill in with little details. In the first compartment I added what the Great Devourer had just eaten. In the next compartment I added some transparent green slime and finally put Sensei Wu in it. Just chillin'. If you thought Sensei Wu's compartment was disturbing, Pythor's is even more disturbing. Disturbing. Now, Pythor's situation is a bit more complicated because he gets eaten by the Great Devourer purple, he comes out white. So somewhere in there, he gets bleached. And I have him going through his little bleaching spa. And finally, the last compartment is the final stage of digestion. This Great Devourer is definitely full after he's eaten all this. But you can't eat anything without a head. And in order to make the head, I want the neck to kind of curve up into a cool serpent-like shape. And this is going to be the toughest part. I started building away with the most advanced techniques I'd ever used, trying to angle pieces in in unique and interesting ways. But all in all, after three hours, it failed and I was knocking my head on my table trying to figure out how I should build this. But I decided I wasn't gonna give up, so I turned on my speaker, started playing some awesome Ninjago music, and this time my work paid off and I was able to get the curvature just right. I incorporated these big tan pieces on the front to give it a sleek curve. Thankfully, I had a lot more dark green pieces to use because this neck 
had to go up even further. I grabbed some super long Technic axles and stuck them in. Then I started making these two stud high rounded neck segments. And every single time I put one on, I offset it by a plate. So it kept declining back slowly. On the front, I used tan ingots to incorporate more detail into the underbelly. It was time to work on the big section where the neck connected. I probably spent way longer than I should have on this section, but I wanted to figure out a strong connection point for this giant head. I ended up using two robot click joints for where the head connects onto the neck. This right here is what happens when I play with Lego. It's an absolute mess. So let's speed run and pick it up. Boom! Time to work on the head. And spent about three hours designing and sculpting this giant snake head. It just looks a little on the weird side. The eyes are too big. So I drop kicked the head and started over. In order to make sure that this snake had the classic Great Devourer look to it, I added big purple eyes with a white claw in the middle for his pupil. Two sharp things coming down. A red tongue using a small red hand at the end to make the tongue look split. And a massive frill behind its head using a combination of dark green and transparent lime green. And of course, to finish this head off, I needed to add the weak spot where Garmadon destroys it. This new and improved snake head made this snake come together in a new way. I love how massive and menacing this snake looks. And once I was done with it, I sent a picture of it to my grandma and she said that it looked big and fearsome, which are two words that I very much want to hear for this snake. But in order to make sure this snake is show accurate, we have to simulate some of the craziest scenes from Ninjago. Level one, we've got Master Wu and Pythor. Can this snake eat them? Yes, it can. Just like in the show, this massive snake devours Wu and Garmadon in one bite. Moving on, for level two, I speed built Destiny's bounty and flew it straight for the Great Devourer. Honestly, I can't quite tell who would have won here. They both look pretty distraught. Then I tried to fit Destiny's bounty in the Great Devourer's mouth, and that definitely did not work. I guess we have to build a bigger snake at some point. But this stop motion clip of the Great Devourer eating Destiny's bounty looks pretty sick. For level three, I got the ninja, put them in their spinners, and spun them into this random pile of white bricks. And suddenly the ultrasonic raider popped into existence. Honestly, this ultrasonic raider is pretty dope with a full-on flying plane that can come off the back but I don't think the tiny speakers on this machine will do a thing to the Great Devourer. I got a giant speaker, turned the music all the way up, wow. All right, we're gonna see how long it takes for this thing to fall off. Yeah! Level four, I built my custom Samurai X from the city of Ouroboros placed Nia in the cockpit and gave her a massive lampstand to jam into the Great Devourer's mouth. I feel like we captured this scene from the show very well. Oh great, no, that's not supposed to happen. Level five. For this one, I simulated Ninjago City by building up some horrific, boring square buildings. Basically, a representation of what they look like in the show. I also built a city park and placed Gale, Gossip, and Vinny reporting. Then I got the Great Devourer and started whipping its tail around. The damage was pretty bad. Level six, I grabbed all the broken buildings and stacked them on top of each other, making the ultimate skyscraper. Then I placed Garmadon on the top and gave him all four of the golden weapons. I flicked Garmadon off. And then I realized if this actually works, my great devourer will be destroyed forever. And yes, Garmadon defeated the Great Devourer, but thankfully before it was destroyed, I was able to make digital instructions. So if you want to rebuild this snake, you totally can. Go to brick-legend.com or to the link in the description and you can pick up your very own digital instructions for this Great Devourer. But now I have to sweep all these broken pieces into a pile and start working on my next block. Peace out. Subscribe.